MMCD, we use a large mechanical aspirator for surveillance of certain disease-transmitting mosquitoes that can be difficult to collect using other surveillance methods. The aspirator we use was designed and built in-house by MMCD employees. It's adapted from a version described by Dr. Roger Nassi of the CDC, and his version was an adaptation of one first designed by Dr. George O'Meara of the Florida Medical Entomology Laboratory. The aspirator designed by MMCD is shorter, lighter, and more maneuverable, and uses a smaller, lighter battery than other designs. We call our aspirator the Succomatic. The Succomatic works by drawing a strong current of air through a net affixed to the front end of an aluminum cylinder. A 12-volt motor turns a fan that creates the air current, sucking air in through the front and blowing it out the back end. Insects, leaves, and other light items are pulled into the net by the air current. We use the Succomatic as the primary surveillance tool for three disease-transmitting species, or vectors. Aedes triseriatus, the primary lacrosse encephalitis vector, Aedes albopictus, a vector of lacrosse encephalitis and several other viral illnesses, and Aedes japonicus, a vector of lacrosse encephalitis and West Nile virus. We also use the Succomatic as a secondary surveillance tool for Culex tarsalis, the mosquito responsible for most West Nile illnesses in Minnesota, and Culicida melanura, the vector of eastern equine encephalitis. Both of these species can be collected by other methods, including CO2 traps, another commonly used surveillance tool at MMCD. The Succomatic is one of the most important tools for preventing lacrosse encephalitis in the Metropolitan Mosquito Control District. It allows us to focus our more labor-intensive work where it is most needed. The goal of our lacrosse prevention effort is to reduce vector populations by eliminating as many of their small aquatic habitats as we can. The lacrosse vector species spend the daytime hours in densely shaded, heavily vegetated areas. All three species tend to stay fairly close to the area where they developed as larvae. When we locate adults, we can be certain that larval habitats are nearby. Virtually anything made by people that can hold water could provide a place for these mosquitoes to develop. The amount of time devoted to inspecting woodlots and neighborhoods for larval mosquito habitat is significant. The Succomatic allows us to spend a small amount of time in several areas. We sample the adult mosquitoes and have staff in our entomology lab identify which of the samples contain lacrosse vectors. We then return to the areas where they were found to search for and eliminate the larval habitat. In essence, the Succomatic is an implement of time savings. It allows us to avoid spending a great deal of time in areas where our attention is not needed, and it focuses our services in areas where we can do the most good. Choosing where to use the Succomatic depends on which mosquitoes are being targeted. The lacrosse vectors all spend daylight hours in densely shaded areas. They are most commonly found in wooded areas or harborage sites where people have left tires or other water holding items or that have the mosquito's natural habitat, water holding tree holes. Lacrosse vectors can also be plentiful where a combination of sparsely wooded habitat and buildings create areas of dense shade during the daytime. The eastern equine encephalitis vector is also most commonly found in densely wooded areas. Like the lacrosse vectors, they have a rather specific larval habitat preference. They develop in bogs with tamarack or black spruce, and sometimes in bogs with a brushy plant called leather leaf. When searching for adult Culicida melanura, we target wooded areas close to bog habitats. Culicida melanura are particularly sensitive to light and rest in dark areas. We have success locating them in heavy ground vegetation. Thick ferns are a favorite resting spot. We also find them resting on or under deadfall tree trunks or in openings of hollow trees. These are all spots to target with the Succomatic when seeking Culicida melanura. Before heading out for a day of Succomatic surveillance, make a plan for sites to sample. Several criteria should be used for planning. For lacrosse vectors, a history of collecting vector species at a site, length of time since the site was last sampled, 
or risk factors such as proximity to junk properties or places occupied by children can be used in daily planning. For Culacita melanura, history of past collections and proximity to bog sites will help direct surveillance. You should carry two nets for the succomatic. You'll need a kill jar that is sufficiently charged with ethyl acetate and fully charged 12 volt batteries. It's a good idea to have two batteries. A fully charged battery has enough power to collect up to a dozen samples, but as a battery gets older, its life shortens. Listen for a change in fan speed to determine when to switch batteries. You will also need sample containers, labels for adult mosquito samples, maps for the sites you plan to sample, and something to keep track of sampling time. A watch, a cell phone with a timer, or a stopwatch will do the trick. It is important to be aware of the environmental conditions before conducting succomatic surveillance. Wet conditions lead to an especially poor sample. Do not collect succomatic samples if it has recently rained or if vegetation is wet with dew. If vegetation is wet, you might need to wait a few hours before using the succomatic. So have a plan to do something else until the vegetation is dry. Prior to entering the site to sample, secure the net around the opening of the succomatic. Binder clips or a large rubber band will help to hold the net in place and reduce the chances of it coming off when momentarily snagged on branches or brush. Connect the succomatic's wiring to the battery and secure the battery pouch around your waist. Set your timer to five minutes. That's the sampling time for all succomatic samples at MMCD. Once in the area to sample, Start the machine, start your timer, and start moving. Walk at a swift pace as quickly as is safe for the conditions. Sample the vegetation. This is where the mosquitoes are resting. Be aggressive with the machine. Suck vegetation into the opening. The aim is to pull the mosquitoes off their resting spots and into the net. Sweep the succomatic side to side to cover more ground and try to catch the mosquitoes that fly up from the vegetation in front of the machine. If there is a walking trail or well-worn path, stay off of it. The mosquitoes aren't on the path, they're in the brush. If you encounter tires or other junk, it's okay to run the succomatic through that area. The lacrosse vectors will rest on or near their own larval habitats. When you reach the end of the five minute sampling period, stop where you are. With the machine still running, remove the large leaves from the net. It helps to prop the back end of the succomatic on your foot or on something else to maintain the airflow. Also, remove any large insects or spiders that you'd like to save. The kill jar will kill everything that goes in. It's rare to collect stinging insects in the succomatic, but be aware there could be a wasp, hornet, or bee in the net, so watch what you grab. When removing leaves, Make sure to shake them inside the opening of the succomatic so that any mosquitoes clinging to the leaves are pulled back into the net. It's not necessary to remove every single leaf from the sample. Leave the smaller leaves and other debris. Lab staff will pick through those under the microscope. Before killing the power to the succomatic, remove the net from the opening. Pinch the net closed above the insects and shake it inside the opening so the airflow pulls the insects further toward the bottom of the net. Twist the net closed as far down as you can without damaging the sample. Head back to your vehicle, place the net in the kill jar, and secure the top of the jar. Before moving to the next site, complete the data entry for the sample you just collected. Fill out the adult mosquito sample label and place it in the window of the container that you'll use for the sample. When all of the insects in the kill jar are dead, transfer them to the labeled container. If it's windy, you should do this inside the vehicle. It's helpful to have something such as a sheet of paper or cardstock under the sample container to catch any mosquitoes that spill. You can then easily transfer the spilled bugs to the container rather than having to pick them up one by one. If it seems to take a long time for the kill jar to work, you'll probably want to recharge that jar when you return to the shop so that it will be ready for its next use. After all of the succomatic samples from the day are delivered to your shop, your field operations supervisor will print a sample submission sheet.
Two different sample submission sheets can be generated from Suckomatic samples. One is for samples targeting lacrosse vectors, the other is for surveillance for the eastern equine encephalitis vector. The Culicida melanura sheet is generated by selecting triple E when entering the surveillance data in the field. The sample sheet should be placed in a bag along with all of the samples that appear on that printout. Because the succomatic samples are such an important tool in lacrosse prevention, they are treated as high priority samples. They must be delivered to the entomology lab as soon as possible, preferably by the day after collection or the following Monday if collected on a Friday or Saturday. If the samples will sit in your shop over the weekend, they should be placed in a freezer to prevent mold growth. The darkness of the sample container, along with the moisture from leaves and insects, provide optimal conditions for mold, and it will spread rapidly at room temperature. Many samples have been ruined by mold. Staff in the entomology lab are trained to scrutinize succomatic samples for five mosquito species. These are the only species for which MMCD has set adult control thresholds from succomatic samples. Use other surveillance methods to survey populations of other mosquito species. Our entomologists painstakingly pick through the insects and debris, looking for the species of interest. The vector mosquitoes in the sample are tallied by species, and the results are entered into the database. Your supervisor will routinely check on results from succomatic samples you have collected. The results will allow them to determine which sites require follow-up work. For lacrosse vectors, that will include harborage and other property inspections to locate and eliminate larval habitats. The response might also include adult control if a succomatic sample indicates the vector population is high. For Culicida melanura, an adult mosquito control response is one of the few available options for reducing their population. The importance of the succomatic is revealed when you can see the amount of time saved by focusing our response only in the areas where vector species were found. There we, go. we often devote many hours to inspecting harborage sites and other surrounding properties, yet the time we devote to succomatic surveillance, both in the field and in the lab combined, is short. Knowing which sites do not require a labor-intensive response saves countless hours that can be devoted to other important work.